For hundreds of years, people have been interested in what's beyond the edge of the world. The wait is over today. Webb has found something so important that it might change everything we thought we knew about the universe. What did it discover? Stay with us as we go deeper into this amazing discovery. We could only see a small part of the universe before the James Webb Space Telescope. It was like looking through a keyhole. Webb has kicked open the door, giving us a view of the world in a way that has never been seen before. The infrared range makes it seem like we have new eyes that can see not only farther, but also in a whole new way. This lets us see the very beginning of the universe, when stars and galaxies were just starting to form more than 13.5 billion years ago. Things are at stake more than ever. With Webb, we're not just looking at faraway objects, we're also putting together the past of the universe. It's possible that each finding will change the way we teach and think about basic ideas like gravity, the nature of light, and the very beginning of the universe. Now is a very important time in science, and every discovery could lead to new ideas or puzzles to solve. Webb isn't just a telescope, it's also a time machine that shows us the past of the universe and shapes the future of science. What Webb found is truly amazing. It just found the first galaxies from the universe's dark ages, and it's one of the most amazing discoveries. The dark ages happened only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, before the universe was full of stars and galaxies like it is now. These galaxies are like the first sounds of the universe. They come from a time that we haven't been able to see this closely before. These discoveries are amazing not only because of how old they are, but also because of what they tell us about how the world began. We can see these old galaxies even though cosmic dust blocks visible light. This is possible because of Webb's powerful technology. This is like having eyes that let you see through the fog of time at night. The finding of these early galaxies makes us question what we thought we knew about the history of the universe. For example, it shows that galaxies formed and changed a lot earlier than we thought. This makes us think about the processes that caused them to form in new ways. This is important because it might change what we think we know about how the first stars and black holes formed in the early universe. Have you ever thought about what made the world shine for the first time? This question makes us want to learn more about the wonder of cosmic reionization, the time when the universe's first stars and galaxies were born, bringing an end to its dark ages. The process of cosmic reionization is like the universe getting brighter after a long time of darkness. It's such a big change that it was the universe's first step toward order and clarity. After the Big Bang, the universe was very hot and dense, with a lot of particles moving around randomly as they created and destroyed things. As this primordial soup grew, it started to cool down, which made room for the first atoms to form. These were mostly hydrogen atoms. There was life during this time, which is called the Dark Ages, but the universe wasn't lit up by stars and galaxies yet. The universe was basically biding its time during this formative period, putting together the parts for a great cosmic show. Even though the stage was ready, the stars and galaxies had not yet made their appearance. Then there was a big change. The power of gravity caused pockets of gas and dust to come together, making the first stars and galaxies. The stars and planets in this group were not soft lights. They were hot furnaces and crucibles of cosmic energy. Their appearance was like a chorus of lights across the universe, with each star adding its own note to the daybreak in the universe. The very first stars gave off such strong light and energy that it started to ionize the hydrogen gas around them, taking electrons away and changing the universe in really big ways. Cosmic reionization was the name of this phase. It didn't happen all at once. It happened slowly over several hundred million years. It was as if the world, which had been in complete darkness, slowly turned up the light, gradually illuminating the vastness of space. More and more galaxies and stars formed, and their light began to clear the cosmic fog. This made the universe visible to ultraviolet light for the first time. This was a major turning point in the history of the universe. It marked the end of the Dark Ages and the start of a bright new era where stars, planets, and maybe even life could thrive. Picture yourself in a huge dark space, like being outside on a night with no moon. At first, 
there is no light and everything is dark. As one by one, the stars start to shine and their light slowly shows the shapes of a beautiful landscape that was covered by the darkness. The mountains, trees, and rivers of the cosmos can now be seen. Cosmic rayonization wakes up the universe from its sleep. It marks the start of a time of finding and illumination and the beginning of the universe as we know it. Now that you know how the first stars turned a cosmic dark age into a highly lit cosmos, imagine sending a sign of humanity into this huge, old universe. What would you say if you could send a message into space that other stars might pick up? Leave your thoughts in the comments, just when you thought you knew everything about the world. Webb brings us to the edge of a new frontier that makes us question everything we thought we knew. What else are we going to learn as we explore the universe more? Watch out. The search for answers about the world has always been a tough problem, and it has become even harder as we've learned more about it. In the past, scientists could only see the sky with their own eyes and draw charts of how the stars and planets moved across it. Galileo Galilei invented the telescope in the early 1600s, which changed the way we could look into the universe. However, even back then, the technology we had limited our view. Because technology kept getting better, our telescopes got smarter and stronger. Even with these improvements, scientists still had to deal with big problems. One big problem has been Earth's atmosphere, which is necessary for life, but bends and blocks a lot of light from faraway stellar bodies especially infrared light. Because of this limiting, our knowledge was limited to a small part of the universe's huge size. Because Webb is in space, far beyond the effects of Earth's atmosphere, it has a clear view of the universe. With its advanced technology and strategic location, Webb can look back in time to the beginning of the universe and learn about how the first stars and galaxies formed and changed over time. The powerful devices on the telescope can pick up faint signals that have been traveling through space for over 13 billion years. This lets us see things that happened right after the Big Bang. Some of the most important questions in astronomy are answered by Webb's mission. For example, how did the world start? How did the very first galaxies and stars come together? What are the basic parts of galaxies like the Milky Way? Webb's answers to these questions not only help us learn more about the world, but they also make us question what we thought we knew about its history. For example, galaxies like Max 0, 647 JD, and Z12 have been found. Not just any galaxies. These are some of the farthest and oldest galaxies that have ever been seen. They look like they did over 13 billion years ago. To look at these galaxies is like finding old family pictures of your great-great-grandparents when they were teenagers. Suddenly, you have a much better idea of how your family came to be, and you can see how certain habits and similarities have been passed down through the years. Similarly, studying these old galaxies helps us understand how galaxies formed, how they have changed over time, and how they might continue to change in the future. These findings have very important effects. Our textbooks have shown a certain timeline of how the universe evolved for decades, mostly based on the best data that was available at the time. But the JWST's observations, such as finding galaxies that were around a lot earlier than was thought before, show that the formation of stars and galaxies began earlier, and maybe even faster than our models predicted. It's like finding out that your ancestors lived in cities and had complex societies a lot earlier than what history books said. Our family history of the universe might need major revisions to include these early stories of how galaxies formed and changed over time. The galaxy candidate SPT-041847 is another interesting find that questions what we thought we knew about how galaxies were structured in the early universe. Seeing this galaxy with such a clear shape so soon after the Big Bang is like discovering a culture with complex buildings and a society that is much older than any archaeologist could have imagined and it makes scientists rethink their ideas about how fast galaxies could organize themselves and form the traits we see in many of them today, like spiral arms. And we're talking about the part of the universe that we can see from Earth when we say observable universe. You can think of the observable world as your neighborhood. It's the part of town you know well because you've been there and looked around. But just like there's more to the world than your town, there's also a lot more to the universe than what we can see right now. 
The universe we can see is thought to be about 93 billion light years across. This is such a huge space that it's hard to understand. Imagine having a car that is so fast it can move at the speed of light. It would still take you 93 billion years to get from one end of the universe that we can see to the other. The fact that the universe is flat is one of the most interesting things we've learned about it. This doesn't mean that the world is flat like a piece of paper. Instead, it means that it seems to follow Euclidean geometry, which says that angles in a triangle always add up to 180 degrees and parallel lines never meet. In that kind of computer game, the world doesn't curve back on itself no matter how far you go. It just keeps going. Then there's the idea of cosmic inflation, which sounds like the universe is getting bigger. But it's really about a time when it grew very quickly right after the Big Bang. Think about blowing up a balloon. When you first blow into it, it expands slowly at first. But then all of a sudden, it swells much faster. Such a thing happened to the universe. It grew faster than the speed of light in a very short amount of time, smoothing out the bumps and wrinkles and creating the big structure we see today. As if these ideas weren't already very strange, let's talk about the multiverse theory, which says that there might be other worlds besides the one we can see. It makes me think that our world might not be the only one out there. Each one has its own set of physical laws. Think of a bubble bath, where each bubble stands for a different world. Some bubbles may be very similar to ours, while others may be very different. In some, the conditions may even be right for life. Did you know that since the 1970s, experts have been sending messages into space to try to get in touch with other civilizations? This early attempt to talk to other planets shows how interested people are in the question, are we alone in the universe? Next, we'll go into a world that has been the basis for many sci-fi dreams. What if I told you that science is almost ready to make fantasy true? The search for life beyond Earth has been fascinating people for hundreds of years, going from being a mere guess to a serious science project. Techno signatures are an idea that is becoming more popular as we use advanced technology to reach out and sense things in space. Think of techno signatures as the marks that modern civilizations have left in space. Just like finding footprints in the sand tells you that someone was there, finding techno signatures would tell you that there is life beyond Earth that uses technology. Techno signatures can be many things, like chemicals made by industry that can be found in a planet's atmosphere, structures around stars, like the made-up Dyson spheres that are meant to collect a star's energy, or even simple signals from technologies like communication or propulsion. Looking for a needle in a haystack the size of the universe is like looking for a light bulb that says, I'm here. We can't just put our telescopes up and listen. We need to use cutting-edge technology and think of new ways to do things. For example, the James Webb Space Telescope's ability to find out what chemicals are in the atmospheres of faraway worlds could help find those that are not only good for life, but also likely to have industrial activity. On the other hand, projects like Breakthrough Listen use radio telescopes to look through the sky for signs that don't fit with the background noise of space. This is like calling the stars on the phone. As we look ahead, the future of space travel is full of exciting possibilities, made possible by advances in technology that were once only found in science fiction. The search for life beyond Earth and the findings that might be made are at the top of this new era. The James Webb Space Telescope has already changed the way we think about the universe. But that's just the start. The goal for future trips is to not only observe extraterrestrial environments, but also go there and explore them directly. Imagine spaceships with the newest propulsion technology that could cut the time it takes to get to Mars and beyond, or probes that could dive into the icy oceans of Jupiter's moon Europa to look for signs of life. The huge steps forward in technology that make these trips possible are truly amazing. CubeSats, which are very small satellites, could be used to look at asteroids, or advanced robots could help build bases on the Moon or Mars. Quantum communication has even been brought up as a way to communicate almost instantly across huge distances of space. This would completely change how we stay connected across the universe. This study of the future isn't just about putting up flags. It has a lot to do with the search for life beyond Earth. 
A top goal is the creation of life detection tools that can find biosignatures on faraway worlds. With these tools, we can look for signs of life, from simple microbes to more complex forms, in the atmospheres of other worlds. What's to come could change where we stand in the world. In our solar system, we might find bacteria life, which would show that life is not limited to Earth. Or using technosignatures, we might be able to pick up the faint signals of faraway societies, which would make us think again about the possibility of life in the universe. Each new finding will add to the story of our universe, making it look like a mosaic. With the help of new technologies, the future of space travel could answer some of our oldest questions and bring up brand new ones. We can solve mysteries about the world that have been talked about for a very long time as we move into the future. The journey ahead has no limits, just like the universe itself. We're all welcome to join this big trip into the unknown. If you picture the universe as a finely made tapestry, cosmic strings are the odd stray threads that run through it and connect the different parts. Imagine pulling on a sweater's loose thread and seeing the cloth gather around it. Cosmic strings are like cosmic strings, but on a much bigger scale. It is thought that they will be very thin, about the width of a proton, but they will have so much gravity that it could bend space-time itself. It's possible that these strings could go through galaxies and act as cosmic superhighways that could change how galaxies move and form. Topological defects may sound like something you'd complain about in a brand new suit, but in the universe, they are places where conditions in the early universe led matter to be spread out unevenly. These flaws are like the threads that hold the world together. They are places where the fabric of space-time has become tangled in a strange way. You might ask, why do we look for these strange things in space? The answer lies in the very basis of what we know about the world. Finding cosmic strings or other geometric flaws would not only support ideas about the early universe and the Big Bang, but it would also give us a lot of information about the basic forces that shape the universe. They might help physicists connect the rules that govern very big things, general relativity, and very small things, quantum mechanics. Finding galaxies in the early universe and the possibility of finding cosmic strings are both big steps forward in our quest to understand our place in the universe. They make us think about not only how big the universe is, but also how complicated it is and how many options it has. Now it's your turn, the public. These findings can change the way people think and make them feel awe, but they also bring up questions and start debates. What do you think about these amazing discoveries? How do they change the way you think about the world and our search for life beyond Earth? Are there certain things about space exploring that you want to know more about? Feel free to leave your thoughts, questions, and ideas in the space below. This trip through the universe is a shared adventure because of your ideas and interest. And if you're as excited as we are about what's out there in space, don't forget to subscribe to get more news from the cutting edge of space research. The universe is very big, and there are a lot of secrets in it. Let's look into them together.